okay last time we discussed this result um, I want to make an emphasis the result is uh, a self adjoint operator on a finite dimensional uh, inner product space has an Eigen value I want to just mention that uh, every self adjoint uh, operator on a finite uh, dimensional uh, inner product space has an Eigen vector. It is the same thing showing that something uh, an operator showing that an operator has an Eigen value is the same as saying there exists uh, a vector x not equal to 0 such that uh, say if the operator is t, t x equals lambda x. What is important is um, in this result is that uh, this is say for this is for a finite dimensional inner product space for a finite dimensional vector space we have already proved that for a finite dimensional complex vector space we have already proved that any operator has an Eigen value okay but if it is a real vector space there are operators which do not have Eigen values okay for example the rotation matrix okay rotation matrix does not have Eigen values if the rotation is not 90 or uh, 270 okay. So this result has been proved earlier that is what I want to emphasize for a complex vector space an operator t having an Eigen value is a, a, a simple uh, application of the fundamental theorem of algebra. Fundamental theorem of algebra says that uh, the um, roots of that polynomial are uh, the roots exist they are either real or complex okay. So there is no guarantee that the roots are real. So we have this general result for a complex vector space. So this is more a uh, result for uh, the real finite dimensional inner product space than for complex finite dimensional inner product space okay this result is more for the real case more important for the real case than for the complex case complex case has been settled already okay um, there are also one or two comments uh, that I need to make one is um, uh, this says if you have a complex uh, finite dimensional inner product space and a self adjoint operator on it now for a self adjoint operator you can look at the matrix corresponding to the operator relative to some orthonormal basis <laughs> then that matrix is a Hermitian matrix if A is the if T is the operator and if A is the matrix of T relative to some orthonormal basis then this A is equal to A star okay. I am still in the complex finite dimensional inner product space so the entries of A could all be complex okay but this theorem says that the characteristic polynomial has only real coefficients because it has only real roots. If it has only real roots then it can be written as the characteristic uh, equa characteristic polynomial can be factorized with linear factors lambda minus lambda 1 lambda minus lambda 2 etc lambda minus lambda n where each of these lambda 1 lambda 2 etc lambda n are real okay. So it may be a completely complex matrix but if it is self adjoint then its characteristic polynomial is real now this is not a trivial observation this is a consequence of uh, the previous uh, the proof of the theorem. And uh, finally um, finite dimensionality is important if the space is not finite dimensional and if the operator is self adjoint then we could uh, we need not have uh, Eigen value so I will give that example. So I am saying that uh, uh, this is not true in the case of an infinite dimensional inner product space so again uh, for us uh, the familiar infinite dimensional space will be C01 this time uh, I will uh, take real value so it need not be complex value real valued uh, continuous functions real valued continuous functions on 0 1 with the inner product with the inner product f g uh, being uh, 0 1 f of t g of t dt. this is an inner product space let us okay real inner product space I am not taking the complex conjugate 
let us look at the operator T on V defined by T uh, f this must be a continuous function. So, T f acting at T is T times f of T. multiplication operator we have encountered this before obviously it is continuous because it is a product of two continuous functions. So this is well defined T is an operator on V T is linear that can be verified T is also self adjoint that is an exercise simple exercise T is a self adjoint operator okay okay. Suppose that uh, I want to show that uh, this T does not have an eigenvalue. Suppose that there exists an F such that T F equals lambda F okay just look at the definition of T F then then it means uh, T F minus lambda F is 0 I can write this as uh, T minus lambda F of T this must be 0 for all T in 0 1 if this equation holds for some lambda then that lambda must satisfy this equation for all t okay. Lambda is if this equation holds for some fixed lambda so lambda is fixed when t is not equal to lambda this means ft is 0 lambda is just one number provided of course lambda belongs to 0 1 okay. But uh, for uh, if a continuous function uh, it is 0 at all points except at one point in 0 1 then what must be the value of the function at that point also be 0 you take either the left limit or the right limit depending on the uh, situation depending on whether you are to the left of lambda or to the right of lambda. So it simply follows that f must be identically 0 so f cannot cannot be an Eigen function Eigen vector it is a function here continuous function that we are seeking. So there is remember the condition on the Eigen vector is that x not equal to 0 T f equals lambda f T x equals lambda x x not 0 f is 0 is the only function that satisfies this equation. So T does not have an Eigen value okay. So T has uh, no Eigen values T has no Eigen values okay. but we have proved that in the finite dimensional uh, real inner product space also uh, if it is a self adjoint then it has Eigen values. So finite dimensionality is important okay the next uh, result is uh, how is given an invariant subspace uh, of corresponding to a linear transformation how does the orthogonal complement of that subspace behave. This question comes for the following reason if uh, see all Eigen spaces corresponding to uh, a given Eigen value are invariant subspaces okay we have seen this before. If uh, you are in an inner product space what more can be said if W is a subspace invariant under a linear transformation T then W perpendicular will be invariant under T star okay this result will prove uh, useful and uh, only for finite dimensional spaces. So let uh, T be a linear operator over a finite dimensional in the product space. let uh, w be fine dimension in a product space I will call it v let w be a subspace of v invariant under t for instance you could take the Eigen spaces then w perpendicular is uh, invariant under T star 
W perpendicular is invariant under T star. The proof is really straightforward. Uh, proof is as follows. So all that I want to show is uh, given T W contained in W, it follows that T star W perpendicular contained in W perpendicular. This is what we want to show. Okay. W is invariant under T. W perpendicular invariant under T star. So let's take. Uh, uh, y in W perpendicular and uh, T star uh, Y to be X. So this X belongs to this left hand side subset. I must show that that is perpendicular. This vector X is perpendicular to W. I will rewrite it as X perpendicular to W. Okay, so take an arbitrary W. Okay, let us say U. Let u belong to w and consider uh, consider the inner product of uh, x with u. I must show that this is 0. I want to show x is perpendicular to w. x is taken from the left hand side subset. x is t star y, y belongs to w perpendicular. So look at inner product of x with u. It is um, t star y with u. And this is uh, y with uh, tu. The proof is true, right? So, see this tu, uh, u is in uh, w, t t of u must be in w. So this is in w. So I can write this as uh, y comma u prime, where uh, u prime belongs to w. But y has been taken from w perpendicular. So this is a dot product of a vector in uh, W perpendicular and a vector in W which is 0 by definition. So X is perpendicular to U and so X belongs to W perpendicular. Okay. In particular uh, we will apply this result for the case of a self adjoint operator. So for a self adjoint operator if if W is invariant under T then W perpendicular is invariant under T okay we will make use of this that is the next result. So the next result is an important uh, corner stone. Let uh, T be a self adjoint operator. self adjoint operator on a finite dimensional inner product space see we have shown that um, v has uh, sorry t has real eigen we have shown that all eigen values of t are real okay what we want to mention further is that uh, there exists an orthonormal basis self adjoint operator on a finite dimensional inner product space there exists an orthonormal basis for v such that uh, each basis vector is an Eigen vector. Such that each basis vector is an Eigen vector. Remember that uh, we proved already the converse of this result. That is how we started this section. If T is a is that is that agreeable we started with uh, the following assumption let t be a linear operator on a finite dimensional let us say real or a complex inner product space let us say t is a finite t is a linear operator on a finite dimensional inner product space 
with the property that there exists an orthonormal basis B such that the matrix of T relative to this B is a diagonal matrix, okay. Then we have seen that T must be self, in the real case we have seen T must be self adjoint, in the complex case we have seen that T must be normal, T T star equals T star T, okay. In the, in the real case, in the real case normality is not possible. In the real case only self adjointness is possible, that is only for self adjoint. So, so all that I am saying is this is a converse of that result. The question that one could ask is in the complex case there is normality of the transformation T, in the real case there is self adjointness of T. So I am saying that the self adjoint uh, case the answer is yes. Can you see that the matrix of T relative to this basis must be diagonal? If this, uh, if this happens, there exists a basis B, each of whose vector is an eigenvector. So the matrix of T relative to that basis is a diagonal matrix. So this is the converse of that result, okay. We, okay, let us take up the complex case a little later. But let me mention presently that the equation similar to normality, that is if uh, T, T transpose, let us say AA transpose equals A transpose A does not necessarily imply that A is diagonalizable, okay. This is a real, this is a real case for the definition of normality. Definition of normality over complex is A A star equals A star A, okay. The claim is that if you have a complex matrix that satisfy, if you have a normal complex matrix then it can be diagonalized. Okay, that is the claim, that is the claim that I am making now. I told you that this is the converse of uh, the question that we started with which we will see is true. We are only looking at the real case. For real case remember that normality when you replace star by transpose does not hold, okay. Example is again the rotation operator. The rotation operator for theta not equal to pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2. Uh, satisfies the equation A A transpose equals A transpose A equals identity in fact, okay. But the rotation operator we know that for these two values does not have Eigen values, okay. So no question of even asking for Eigen vectors, okay. So let us proof. So this is a result both for real and complex case, right. I have not mentioned anything about the underlying uh, field. You have a self adjoint operator then it is diagonalizable by means of a unitary matrix or an orthogonal matrix depending on whether it is a complex space or a real space, okay. That is what this theorem says. So the proof will make use of uh, the two results that we proved earlier. For a self adjoint operator we have shown that uh, there are all eigenvalues are real. We have shown that a self adjoint operator has eigenvalues, okay. These two results are important. Of course, I will also make use of this result. The proof is by induction. So let us take the case proof is by induction. Let us take, take the case when uh, dimension of uh, V is 1. I know that uh, T has uh, uh, an eigenvalue and so an eigenvector. T has an eigen as an eigenvalue. and of course an eigenvector. Okay. What I mean by this is that uh, if you are in the complex case of course this makes sense. If you are in the real case let us just remember once again that we have shown for a self adjoint operator that there exists a real eigenvalue and, and uh, which, which actually means the corresponding eigenvector can be taken to be real. Okay. So T has an eigenvalue and an eigenvector. Let us take, uh, see if dimension V is 1, so let me call it, uh, okay, let us say, let us say Tx uh, equals lambda x, lambda is eigenvalue, x is eigenvector. In this case, uh, let us call uh, x1 uh, as uh, x by norm x, x is not 0, so norm x is not 0. 
call x1 as uh, x by norm x then uh, just look at uh, the basis b consisting of this vector alone the matrix of t this is a basis for v and this is an eigen vector by construction so the uh, induction the first step of uh, induction principle that is satisfied okay v is one dimensional this is a basis this vector by construction is an eigen vector so let us assume that this result is true for all finite dimensional vector spaces uh, of dimension less than uh, n okay that is I have a self whenever there is a self adjoint operator on a finite dimensional vector space of dimension less than the dimension of v then there is an orthonormal basis each of whose vector is an eigen vector okay okay so let us now look at uh, this construction can be done in any case t has an eigen value real eigen value in the real case x is a real eigen vector so this construction can be done what I will do is to look at uh, w as a subspace spanned by this vector x1 okay then this is a, an eigen space an eigen vector so obviously t of w is contained in w w is invariant under t by the previous theorem uh, so t of uh, sorry t star of w perpendicular is contained in w perpendicular but t star is t self adjoint operator so t of w perpendicular is contained in w perpendicular the dimension of okay t is self adjoint the dimension of w perpendicular is uh, one less than the dimension of v because the vector uh, remember v is equal to w plus w perpendicular for finite dimensional vector space v is w plus w perpendicular uh, the dimension of w is one so dimension w perpendicular is one less than the dimension of v so now I will define an operator u on w perpendicular using the operator t let us uh, set to u from w perpendicular to w perpendicular so u must be a linear operator the spaces must be the same set this defined by not set now it is let u be defined by uh, u is t restricted to w perpendicular the restriction of t to w perpendicular that is my operator u and remember uh, you need to verify that uh, see when you look at u as t restricted to w perpendicular it means you are restricting your attention in the domain the domain is w perpendicular you are making sure but uh, what is the guarantee that the codomain is w perpendicular because I am I am I am saying u is an operator from w perpendicular to w perpendicular that comes from this okay. see this comes from uh, this this will tell you that uh, uh, t takes that element in x uh, that element x in w perpendicular to w perpendicular again it won't go to w and so this is well defined okay this that u is an operator on w perpendicular is well defined because of this okay now u is an operator on uh, okay t is self adjoint implies u is self adjoint I am going to leave that as an exercise t equal to t star implies u equals u star okay this is an easy exercise you have to again use the fact that v is w plus w perpendicular that is all okay so u is a self adjoint operator on a finite dimensional vector space w perpendicular whose dimension is less than dimension w uh, dimension v so by induction hypothesis see this is another induction principle that I am using okay so u corresponding to this u there is a, an orthonormal basis so I am sure you will agree when I write uh, that uh, 
there uh, exists uh, an orthonormal basis. I will call it B prime because I have already used B. There is an orthonormal basis B prime. I will call the elements x2, x3, etc. x n. There exists an orthonormal basis B prime for W perpendicular. It is a space W perpendicular that we are uh, concerned about for W perpendicular, which also has the extra property that uh, such that uh, each uh, such that uh, okay you tell me if this is okay such that t x i equals some lambda i x i for uh, 1 sorry 2 less than or equal to i less than or equal to n x2 I have used for the first vector this is an orthonormal basis. So they are mutually perpendicular and uh, norm of each of these vectors is 1. <coughs> Each vector must also be an eigen vector, sorry, corresponding to u. You should have objected. Corresponding to u, u is the operator that we are talking about, such that u x i equals lambda i x i for each of these vectors. So i varies from 2 to n. So the natural thing is to ask whether these vectors are also eigen vectors for t. If they are eigen vectors for t, then I am through. There is one eigen vector x1 already. These are uh, n minus 1 eigen vectors. Uh, the dimension must add. Dimension 1 there, the dimension of this is uh, n minus 1. This must add to the dimension of v. So that this uh, union will give me a an orthonormal basis uh, for v, and the matrix of uh, t with respect to this basis will be a diagonal matrix. Okay, each of each vector of this basis is an eigenvector okay. So does it follow that uh, each x i is an eigenvector for t also from this that is by definition. See these x i's belong to w perpendicular and u is t restricted to uh, w perpendicular okay. So it follows immediately uh, that uh, t x i equals uh, lambda i x i. Some of these lambdas may repeat but does not matter to us. What we are interested in is the vectors. Do I have a basis, orthonormal basis okay. So I have these vectors together um, let me say x1 together with uh, b prime gives uh, an orthonormal basis. basis for V with the, the desired property. I have repeated this too many times. Okay. So the story stops for the real inner product space because you must take this theorem along with uh, the rotation operator to conclude that uh, you need self adjoinedness in order to conclude that uh, there is an orthonormal basis each of whose vector is an Eigen vector. For the rotation operator there are no Eigen values. It is, no, it is normal with uh, regard to a real inner product space. The rotation operator T satisfies T T transpose equals T transpose T equals identity. But T cannot be diagonalized in I mean it fails in the worst possible case it fails in the worst possible case in the sense that it does not even have real eigenvalues okay. So T as a rotation operator on R2 on the real space does not have eigenvalues. So for real space this is the this is the result and remember the uh, question of diagonalize the question of diagonalizability has been specialized here. See the original question of diagonalization is for a finite dimensional real vector space. There you are interested only in a general basis. But if it is an inner product space, it is only natural to require something uh, extra from the basis which is orthonormality okay. So for orthonormality um, you need A equals A star okay. For 
if you want orthonormality then the operator must be self adjoint especially if it is a real inner product space. The matrix version as, uh, as we uh, always do the matrix version is the following the matrix version is a corollary of this result let uh, A be see in the case of uh, complex uh, self adjoint the word Hermitian is used let A be a Hermitian uh, operator a uh, Hermitian matrix of uh, order uh, n then uh, okay let me also emphasize that it is complex be a complex Hermitian matrix of order n then there exists a unitary matrix there exists a unitary matrix I will call it uh, P uh, such that such that um, P inverse A P equals uh, D where uh, D equals uh, diagonal lambda 1 lambda 2 etc lambda n. lambda 1 etc lambda n being uh, the Eigen values of uh, A. If A is real symmetric if we say A is real symmetric then uh, there exists an orthogonal matrix I will call it Q different from P there exists an orthogonal matrix Q when I say an orthogonal matrix it is a real orthogonal matrix because if it is complex then we will call it a unitary. So there exists an orthogonal matrix Q such that uh, such that Q inverse A Q equals D where D is diagonal as before diagonal entries of D being the eigen values of A okay. So here I need to only emphasize that uh, P inverse is equal to P star because P is unitary. Similarly here P inverse is P transpose okay. What is the proof? Uh, this is a corollary of the previous result Q, Q inverse Q transpose okay. This is a corollary of the previous one so we can appeal to the previous result. You are given a complex Hermitian matrix A so you can define a linear transformation through this so you define a Cn with the usual inner product. Define P on V by P of X uh, equals A X you have a matrix through which you can define a linear transformation then uh, this definition means that the matrix of T relative to uh, the standard basis is A the matrix of T relative to the standard orthonormal basis is the matrix A. A is uh, complex Hermitian so A is uh, A star so T is T star so I have a self adjoint um, operator on a complex inner product space then I know that um, by the previous theorem there is an orthonormal basis um, for uh, Cn 
satisfying the property that each uh, vector in that orthonormal basis is an Eigen vector for T. Eigen vector for T means T x equals lambda x but T x equal to A x so A x equals lambda x collect all these Eigen values collect all the yeah collect all these Eigen values arrange them uh, as a diagonal matrix then we know that this is uh, the same as writing down uh, the matrix of T relative to the new orthonormal base that we have constructed okay. So I will simply say appeal to the previous theorem appeal to the previous result to construct uh, an orthonormal basis this time I will call it B so I have x1 x2 etc xn for uh, cn for v what I know is that each of these vectors uh, is an Eigen vector for uh, the operator T so if I look at uh, if I look at the matrix of T relative to this basis then I know that that is a diagonal that is a diagonal matrix lambda 1 etc lambda n okay the proof is complete if I tell you what uh, what must be P just give one choice for P okay let us call uh, P as a matrix whose first column is x1 second column x2 etc x n you have these vectors constructed by the previous theorem existence not construction so collect uh, those vectors so this is something uh, that we have done even in the ordinary case without the without the inner product space thing set P equal to this then uh, this P this matrix P has a property that uh, its columns are uh, mutually orthogonal and the norm of each column is 1 so this is a unitary matrix that is P star equal to P transpose so then P is unitary finally uh, this equation must be verified but as before this equation we have seen before look at AP AP by definition is uh, A into x1 x2 etc xn we know that this A can be brought inside to write uh, A x1 etc A xn each of these is an Eigen vector so I have uh, the Eigen values coming now lambda 1 x1 lambda 2 x2 etc let me just write down the last step uh, which is uh, a little exercise for you verify that this is equal to P times D yes which is almost obvious you first write P and then uh, D okay so AP equals PD you know that uh, P is um, invertible so you can pre multiply by P inverse and then uh, you get this equation okay real case is similar in the real case uh, you know that the Eigen values are real corresponding vectors can be taken to be real so this will be a basis consisting of uh, real vectors now real vectors uh, giving you Q for instance uh, then it is uh, an orthogonal matrix right it will be an orthogonal matrix and the rest of the proof is as before okay so this is just a version matrix version of uh, of this important uh, theorem uh, the last part is really for uh, normal operators that I will do in the next class okay so uh, what it means is that uh, uh, an operator is uh, diagonalizable by means of uh, an operator on a complex vector space this time just complex vector space is uh, diagonalizable by means of an orthogonal transmission by means of a unitary matrix if and only if it is normal okay so there is a significant difference between between the question of a real symmetric matrix and the complex symmetric matrix that is if A is real and if A is equal to A transpose then this theorem says A can be diagonalized okay take A to be complex A equal to A transpose there is no theorem which can guarantee that A is diagonalizable okay 
whereas you take A complex A equal to A star, the conjugate transpose, then A is diagonalizable. Okay. So the question is really about what is the corresponding operation for transpose in the complex case. The corresponding operation for transpose in the complex case is conjugate transpose. Okay. So remember that this statement is wrong. A complex symmetric matrix is diagonalizable is wrong. Okay. A real symmetric matrix is diagonalizable. A complex Hermitian matrix is diagonalizable. Okay. So let me stop here.